Thanks for taking the time, Coach. We'll get started with Martin and then Les. Hi, Dave. Um, I was wondering if you can kind of describe the contributions that Alex Singleton makes on special teams and, and also, you know, assuming that TJ Edwards is out, like what kind of loss that is for you guys. Yeah, uh, no, Singletary or Singleton, sorry. Uh, Sing's a great story. I mean, his background, he's been cut by a million different teams in this league. I don't know. I think the number might be four or five. Um, the bottom line is he's been up and down a million different rosters. He ended up going to Canada and playing up there. Um, and then finally, he got a shot with us here. He uh, was on the practice squad. And then a year ago, obviously, he came up. And when he came up for us, he immediately made a big impact. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's a secret to anybody who's seen him play. I mean, when he was in Canada, I think he was like their leading tackler up there for those guys and I think the defensive player of the year. So he's always been a really good football player, really productive. I mean, he just kind of fought through it and uh, waited for his time to come and get an opportunity. And all he's ever done with opportunity is make the most of it, really. Um, he got a chance to play for us last year on special teams, played really well and helped us out. He obviously, he's continued to do that this year. And then he got a chance to go in there on defense. And uh, he went in there and made plays. Um, but he's a great guy, great story. He works really hard. He's passionate about the game of football. And uh, he's fun to be around. He has, a, he has a energy for it. And uh, he just loves playing. And it really doesn't matter what he's doing. Um, so obviously really excited for him. And uh, he obviously helped us win that game, which was huge and the most important thing. Uh, in regards to T.J. Edwards, obviously, anytime we lose a good football player, it's a loss. T.J. played a lot for us a year ago. He's been a four-core player for us this year um, and, and played at a high level for us. But at the end of the day, it just creates an opportunity for somebody to step up and uh, go in there and make plays. And we've had a bunch of guys do that. Graylin Arnold's come up for us. Fulgham's come up for us and played on teams. Obviously, he also made a contribution on the offense. Um, so we'll be in good shape. Um, we're excited for the opportunity to go out and play again. Um, but yeah. Go less and then Howard. Right, that was kind of what I was going to ask about Alex. So I'll switch to something else. Uh, Dave, your return game, I know nobody's returning kickoffs much right now, but uh, with punts, are, are you just kind of emphasizing being sure handed? Uh, you just don't, haven't gotten much going there with the yeah, return. No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, shoot, we always want to get better. There's no secret um, in that, uh, and I would never argue that. Uh, I thought we did a nice job in the game the other night. We had the eight-yard return on the uh, longer punt. They had the one punt that I think went 20 yards in the air and then rolled 20 yards on the ground, so they get a 40-yard net out of it. It's hard to return that one. Um, there are those situational punts in the plus 50 area where those are a little bit more difficult to get a return on. Um, and I, I'm not trying to argue against, I mean, you asked a question a week ago about the return game, uh, and you're kind of back at it. And I, I'm definitely not trying to argue against it, but I will say that I think over the course of the season, the same thing I said last week, that I think some of this stuff's going to balance out. I mean, one thing that you do look at, too, is like how far are these guys punting the ball. And I want to say that uh, our opponents are in the bottom 10 in terms of yardage. They're actually punting at distance against us. So obviously, the shorter they punt the ball, I would say typically the less return you're going to get. And I'm not trying to make excuses. Like I said, less. we always want to be better. There's no question about that. Um, we're fighting to get better and find ways to improve. Um, but I would say that I think there's a lot that goes into all that. Um, and that kind of goes back to even further back our conversation about the statistics and websites that provide a bunch of data on where teams rank and how good they are. There's just more to it um, than in any given one number, like kickoff return average or punt return average. There's a lot that goes into all that stuff. Over the course of the season, a lot of that averages out a little bit more. Um, but right now, I would say... We'll see how it goes. Like I said, we're trying to get better. Um, it's an emphasis for us, for sure. Um, I wouldn't disagree with that. But if uh, if you were to say you're just doing a terrible job, I wouldn't agree totally with that either. Um, I think the truth lies somewhere in between right there. Um, but uh, no, I'm excited about it. I think Greg's done a good job. I thought that eight yard return that he had was, was a good return by him. And uh, I think we'll see how it goes going forward. Thank you. Go ahead, Howard, and then Mike. All right, Dave, I'm trying to understand how only one second 
can go off the clock on that uh, onside kick uh, right before the two-minute warning. And I know, I understand that it has to be touched, but didn't Richard Robert, uh, Rogers bobble it a little bit? She, explain to me how only one second comes off the yeah, clock, no, which is a big one second. Yeah, sure. Uh, we all understand in that game, two seconds would have been better for us. But uh, <laughs> um, I, I would say, honestly, I would say that's pretty standard. Um, anytime, like, you know, for example, if there's one second left on the clock before the end of the half or the end of the game, one play that typically happens, especially before the end of the half, would be you just kind of bunt the ball to that front line kickoff return player. He fields the ball and immediately takes a knee. And on that play, there's a one second runoff minimum. And usually that's what you get. So if there's two seconds left, uh, that play really is not an option because usually the runoff time is a second. So I would say Richard Rodgers did bobble the ball a little bit. All of that happens really fast still. He still really declared himself down. Um, so I, I would say I would have a hard time arguing that they did anything wrong with that. I think the one-second runoff was fair. Um, but, yeah, in, in that case, it sure would have been better for us had it been two. Thanks. Go ahead, Mike, and then Paul. Hey, Dave. Um, I know Cravon's not really played a lot on special teams this year, but when he got here, he was heavily on that unit. I was just curious about um, what you take away from his kind of approach to the game and, and kind of his tenacity overall. Yeah, no, Cravon is, uh, I mean, he's a really scrappy player. I think he's got the nickname of Scrap, but, I mean, he's a scrappy player. He competes. He works hard. Um, he's really competitive. He hasn't done quite as much for us. Obviously, he's got a big role on defense. I think he played 30-something snaps in that last game, uh, which I think was up from the weeks before. But uh, he's always been a, been a uh, good player for us, I think, as a team. And uh, we're excited to have him. And... Uh, I mean, his role on any one game would adjust based off what everybody's asking him to do. But he's always been competitive for us, and he's always done everything we've asked him to do. Paul and then John. Hey, Dave. Uh, just wanted to get your weekly Cam Johnston comment. Uh, half of his kicks have been inside the 20. Half of them have been 53 yards or longer. And how, how does Rudy Ford's absence, if he's gone for a couple of games, impact – uh, Cam's approach to kicking. Yeah, um, you know, Cam, I mean, I would say the same thing I always say. Uh, he's He really works hard at his craft. It's really important to him. Um, he's a super talented player, and I think right now all of us are kind of seeing the fruits of his labor. Um, like I said the last time, we knew it was going to be a project when we got him in here, and he's just continued to make improvement or progress every week of every season, every off season, every chance he's gotten. Um, he's really striking the ball really well. He's he is definitely super talented, um, and we're really happy with what he's doing. So I'm happy for him, and uh, and. Uh, and I'm happy for what he's been doing for us. But uh, in regards to Rudy, obviously, anytime you lose a good football player, it hurts. Uh, he obviously has been outstanding for us out there, especially as a gunner. I mean, I think he's made five tackles and really two games out there, three games out there. Um, and uh, he, he makes an impact for us. But the bottom line is when anyone goes down, somebody will get to step up. I thought Grayland did a good job. For us in the last two games, playing outside there as a gunner, Fulgham came in and played a little bit as a gunner. Um, we got some options on the practice squad, guys that could come up and help out. So it'll just be another opportunity for somebody to come up and make play. John and then Jeff. Hey, Dave, to kind of follow up on, on Damo's point, uh, and, and you just mentioned how successful Rudy has been as a gunner. Also going back to Craig James as well, who was really good at it. Um, do you, at that point, uh, go to Cam and say, maybe you got to kick this a little bit differently when those guys are out, or or does it not have that much of an impact? Uh, no, I think, uh, I mean, it can definitely change a little bit. Um, it may change what we ask him to do a little. I don't know if anyone would totally notice the differences. Um, but, uh, no, definitely, I mean, you build your game plan around the players that you have out there on the field, and when those players change and the plan changes a little bit, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about our plan and, and what we try to do with, 
you know, certain players on the field. But yeah, I think it does adjust a little bit. But at the end of the day, I would say not not drastically. At the end of the day, for us, the really the most important thing on that unit is really the net result. Um, and so what we're looking to do is try to get the best net for our football team. So the actual distance of the punt, that gets back to Les's stuff on the amount of yards per return and all that stuff. The distance on the punt isn't nearly as important as the net. Um, you could punt the ball 70 yards down the field and give up a 30-yard return, and it might not be a great play. Or you could punt the ball 50 yards down the field and give up zero return, and it's a better play. Um, so at the end of the day, the bottom line for us is that net and uh, putting our team in the best situation. Um, the other thing that's happened now is the ball, because I would say there's more punts around midfield than there ever has been. Um, probably some of it due to the touchback, some of it due to the offense is moving the ball down the field a little bit more per possession. Um, maybe some of it's because of how aggressive they are going for it on fourth down. Um, but anyway, at the end of the day, there's more punts towards the middle of the field than there's ever been, and that's a kind of a totally different situation. You're not just trying to get the ball down the field as far as you can, but place it down there. So there's a lot of different situations also. But yeah, for us, the bottom line is we're trying to get the best net, and we'll adjust the scheme based off the players that we have. Jeff and then Zach. Uh, Dave, uh, Doug uh, went for it on fourth and four. Uh, if he hadn't, uh, Jake would have had, I guess, maybe a 55-yarder. I was just wondering what was his max, I guess, pregame. What were you thinking? Um, would he have been able to kick that distance? Did that factor it in any way in Doug's decision? Yeah, no, um, I'll just say this. and I, I know last week we talked about uh, line to get and all that stuff. I, I don't really want to get into that every week, I don't think. Um, at the end of the day, we do cover all those situations. Um, I, I think I said last week that we also have a lot of confidence in whatever decision coach makes. Uh, he's obviously really aggressive. I know the football team loves that about him, and it's been really successful for us. So. We totally support any decision that he makes. I know that our job is to be ready to kick the field goal when he says kick it, and we got a lot of confidence in that unit, a lot of confidence in Jake making those kicks. I would say the the line to get wasn't necessarily a factor in that. It was more of a uh, coach's decision. Those decisions are obviously really hard this week, uh, obviously. Um, I think the thing I always say in this league is if you lose, it's really hard to win. Uh, any of those decisions you make are going to be second-guessed and questioned. Um, and then when you win the game, it all works out. Uh, so anyway, it all worked out this week. We won the football game. Uh, coach made great decisions, and uh, we'll be ready if our number is called. Go ahead, Zach, and then Bo. Hey, Dave, I'm, I'm curious about wide receivers on special teams. Is that a body type you'd like to have when it's it's the the fourth, fifth receiver that's 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 active on a given week? Um, yeah, I mean, we like to have good football players wherever we can get them. Really doesn't matter what position they are, uh, whether it's a wide receiver, running back, tight end, linebacker. Um, and I'm not trying to skirt the question, but the bottom line is we're always looking for good football players. Um, a good example of that, I mean, Fulgham came up for us. He plays a core role for us. He's got, obviously, a good body type. At the end of the day, every player is a little bit different, right? There's some guys, there's some wideouts that are smaller, faster, and you got to use them in a little bit different way. And then there's bigger guys. Fulgham's a bigger guy, so you can use him as more of a blocker and in some of those areas, a uh, little speed guy, maybe more of a gunner playing on the perimeter, stuff like that. But... Obviously, um, in this game, with the number of limitations, 48 on game day, 53, all those numbers, I mean, the more anybody can do, the more well-rounded a player is. Obviously, the more they can help, I think, really, both on offense, defense, and on special teams. And, and just a quick follow-up there, because last year, J.J. wasn't really used on special teams. I think he only played 3 4%, and he hasn't been used there this year. Is, is that a role he could have, or do you not? Yeah, so I would say um, to kind of answer that question, it, it sometimes doesn't come down to the individual player, but it also comes down to who else is on the roster. So maybe J.J. does a great job for us, but maybe we have somebody else who's a little bit better um, in a certain area. And so for us, we're going to use the top 11 guys we can get out on the field on any given play. And... Uh, so anyways, a lot of times it's not dictated by what we think of a player, meaning like, you know, I'm not saying 
like JJ, I mean, I think JJ is a really good player. He's got a complete package. He can run. He can block. Um, so he does provide a lot of stuff for us. That being said, maybe we got a guy who's playing a gunner who's faster than him on the outside who's also a defensive player. So asking a guy to go run and make tackles is a little bit more in his natural skill set. Maybe we ask that other player to do that instead of J.J. So sometimes it comes down to just the total roster makeup and who, who are all the pieces we got to work with. And that really generates a lot of our decisions. It's not necessarily on we really like this player and don't like this one, but maybe we just have somebody who that role is a little bit better fit for. We'll wrap it up with Bo and then Tim. Hey Dave, we talked, you know, in the in the summer about how difficult it was going to be evaluating guys without preseason games. Uh, you know, not really seeing them with live bullets. Um, how has that gone? Uh, like, are you seeing what you expected to see from the rookies who you didn't have experience with? Are there guys who have surprised you? Maybe they're more gamers than they look like in practice. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Um, and I would say, actually, we're at a spot where I just left my office going over kind of our depth chart. And we're four games in. We have a lot of a lot of information on all these guys. We know who they are a lot more now so than we ever have. Uh, their pluses, minuses, strengths, weaknesses, and uh, how we can kind of build a game plan or a scheme around these guys better than ever. So right now, truth be told, today, really our focus is, hey, um, are there any moves we need to make in terms of playing a guy at a left tackle or a left guard on kickoff return or et cetera, et cetera, all the way across the board? But let's make sure we're getting all 11 guys who are on the field in the absolute best spots and we're asking them to do things that they're really good at. So that's kind of our process right now. And it's that that process is going on right now because we feel like we do have a little bit more information than we've ever had, especially with the lack of the preseason. Sometimes that happens a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, so I would say it's, it's been good this first four weeks. I think we've learned a lot about a lot of these guys. We've ended up playing a lot of players. We've had some injuries. So guys have had to roll through and we've gotten some reps on guys and a little bit better feel for players. And that'll be important throughout the course of the year. Go ahead, Tim. Dave, you mentioned that, uh, Fulgham made some contributions for you on Sunday. Uh, what do you know about him? Uh, does he have a, a strong special teams background and, uh, were you an advocate for him as a result of that? Yeah, no, uh, he came in here. Um, I, I didn't have anything to do with him coming in here. Obviously Howie and those guys handle all that. Um, and they've always done a great job with that. But, uh, once he got in the building, obviously I go and watch the film and see him see what everyone's done in their past and watch all their plays from before. He did have some film on tape of him playing special teams. I think he was in Detroit doing it. And uh, he, he did some stuff in the return game, and he was intriguing. There was a little bit of coverage stuff that we looked at, and that was intriguing. So we were kind of intrigued by his uh, film that was you know from game stuff, preseason or regular season. Um, and then that stuff was intriguing. Then he came in here and he practiced. He did a really good job in practice. Obviously, he's got really long arms, so that helps anytime you're trying to keep people off your body, either in coverage, and it also helps as a blocker, um, engaging guys with your hands and your arms um, and making it harder for them to escape you. But uh, he's got long arms. He was a really competitive player in practice uh, and all the drills and the environments that we created for him. He really excelled in all those things. So it really wasn't a surprise for me that he ended up getting a chance and going in and playing well. Um, and then obviously I was super happy to see him have success on the offensive side of the ball as well. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.